report. Peterroo. All right. So uh, firstly, I'm going to visit Digication. I'm going to go um, kind of slowly enough so that you can follow along if you want to. You absolutely do not have to. Um, I'm available for consultations, and you'll have the resources to to follow up on. So um, don't don't kill yourself if you can't follow along. But I'm just going to walk you through um, slowly. <laughs> mbill.digication.com. And there it goes. Uh, you'll be asked to log in, and you can just do so via your Manhattanville email credentials. I'll give you maybe a few seconds to do that if you want. All right. And uh, the next thing you'll do is um, what's key here is to scroll down to where it says course. And you guys will see uh, higher ed cohort six or, or higher ed, I'm sorry, signature cohort 13. Uh, I'm going to go to higher ed cohort six, keep in the higher ed world. Okay. And uh, next you got the very key ePortfolios tab. And then down here, you'll see uh, ePortfolio template. So um, they're all, uh, Dr. Iverson mentioned the five themes. So you'll see them broken out into different sections. So a lot of it is done, not a lot. Uh, there's a foundation built for you. And so you'll be able to complete that uh, with all your artifacts and reflections. Uh, the key bit here, which I want you to pay particular attention to, is to click uh, this button, create ePortfolio from template and not here. So look for the verb. And there's the big green button. So here is uh, create your ePortfolio. Uh, first thing, just make sure EDD portfolio template is chosen. You probably won't have access to too many others, but just because of my role here, uh, I have access to everything. And uh, let's give it a consistent title. Uh, I'm just, for me, I'm just gonna put uh, test and then my name. And then um, I guess it's H-I-E-D six. So you would put first name, last uh, signature um, 13 or, or whatever. All right, so we've got our template chosen. We've got our name there. <clears throat> and uh, create. And this is going to chug along for a few moments. Green is good. All righty. And then uh, click the little X at the top. So here's my, uh, my new ePortfolio test. Uh, this is my other one for, for real. Uh, four seconds ago, so that's our one. So I'm gonna click there. So now you can see up here, this is mine. We're not in the template. This is the, the child ePortfolio that we've created. Um, and here are each of the five themes, developing self, facilitating, and et cetera. And um, underneath here, we have what are called uh, modules. So this is what you'll be working in, or you'll create uh, new spaces to upload uh, your content to. So for example, about me. So as I, as I hover over the, the module, there's this little menus that pop up. So at the top is the little edit, bu edit button. And, and when you click edit, you'll see uh, a little prompt at the bottom. So if you ever have questions about, this is what um, the faculty have decided or are, are guiding you with. Uh, regarding what should go in each module or page. So here I'm introducing myself and et cetera. I can just close this, honestly. So here I've got the edit button about me. I can just do this. And then I can continue typing. Uh, this is my introduction to Julio. Just saying candid for the purpose of this. Um, so here, so this is bold. You've got our formatting toolbar up here. I'm just going to bold here, um, and then I would just go on and on. Um, so another example, contact information. I can click there. So again, here is sort of some examples of, of other people's pages you can go to, and I can just do this. Uh, let me scroll down here. Um, this is the little auto resize button, so that'll give you a little space. Uh, I can say uh, college. I 
and etc cetera, etc cetera. and then i can just alter the formatting however i want um so for example here it says um any questions so far feel free to throw it up in the chat and i hope dr Robson, if you if you see anything i'm missing uh <laughs> feel free to pass that off to me so here's resume what you could do is um Again, we can we can add, click the edit button and put text in here. But for now, I'm going to show you how to um, upload an entire document. Say, um, so I've got uh, the plus sign here, and I can upload a file. I'm going to select files to upload. Uh, I have a thing handily called demo files, as I do this all the time. Here's something called sample CV. I'm going to put it up there. So I'm confirming that's the file, and I click upload. And there it goes. And if you pause for a moment, there are yeah. a couple template questions that just popped in. Okay. Yeah. One is that the template is not looking like what you're sharing. So. Uh, okay. Yeah, we, I don't, yeah, I don't, I think cohort six, we don't have that same exact template. Like I, there's one next to it that says blank e-portfolio template and then I did it and everything downloaded. All I did was like sample one, sample two, sample three, sample four, like those options. Okay. That's what I have. In there. So um, like before, uh, I'll just jump back here, uh, go back to home. Uh, I'll go to my course again. You're in uh, 13 or six? Six. Six. Okay, six. Baja, I, I, we all made a copy of that template because Thank you, Dr. Iverson, for pointing out that we needed to have this done this week anyway, so I think we're all doing it as he's doing it. Um, the one thing that I think is challenging, even though it's not the same, is even if we try to modify the header to get it to match yours, it's not allowing us to modify the, the page names. Like, so yeah, it's locked right now is home sample section one, sample two, sample three, so I'm not sure if there's a okay. way to that When you were doing it, like, you had that the one that we're looking at as well on your homepage, but there was one beside it that was blank. We have the one where it says it's a blank e-portfolio template and there's like a computer in the background, but there was one that you were looking at to like the left of it. That was a different one that we didn't have, but it was like the same kind of writing. Uh, can you share yours? Sense. Can we do that? Sure. Can I, if I'm, if I'm not the host, can I do it? Uh, Dr. Arson, can you promote? Uh, no, you should be able to tell me if you hit a hiccup. I typically make the default setting and then everybody can share. Is it working? I don't see it on mine. Uh, Just Jesse, a share you, screen I, on the bottom. I, yeah. I have a share. Um, okay. Hold on. I don't have it on mine for some reason. Hmm. Oh, wait, hold on. Update. There should be a green box at the bottom that you can mm -hmm. click on a green like rectangle next to the chat box. Okay. That work? All right. Yeah, it's coming out. Yep. There we go. Create. Uh, can, we scroll up, please? can you scroll up, please? Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Uh, click the close. Is there any, uh, can, can you cancel out of this for a second at the bottom? Um, right. Yeah, my next almost there. I can't see because yep. like, the people are in the way, but I'm trying to hide. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So bah, bah, bah. go to the right where it says create ePortfolio from template. All right. Scroll to the down a little bit. Or maybe are you not in? Hmm. Uh, you're it's in. Portfolio template now. Yeah, you should have it. Let me just make sure. Um, yeah, you're in here. It's Jennifer McCarthy. Oh, there. EDD portfolio template. Click that one. Okay, and then click uh, at scroll the top, and then write your name again. Mm -hmm. uh, then flash uh, signature Wait, or cohort six or what have you. Yeah. Yep, yeah, higher ed C6 or something. Whoops, yeah, uh, I guess. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Scroll down a little bit more. Okay, EDD portfolio template is chosen and click create. 
Oh, okay. All right. There we go. All right, it's loading. <clears throat> okay. Good. And hopefully for others that whether you are in C13 or C6, you'd see how you scroll down and select the EDD template. Neat. Teachable moment, right? All yeah, right. Yeah, thanks, Jennifer. Sure. Helpful for all. All right, so here I have um, said uh, sample resume. But we also still have this placeholder. So what you can do if you need to adjust things is you hover over, click on the module, hover, go down to the little trash can. You're going to have to type the word delete. I feel Digication got too many frantic phone calls of um, I deleted by accident. <laughs> so, and then delete that. And then again, you've got this little, on the little contextual menu, you've got this little move icon and you can drag things around. Um, much like with physical objects, you can't kind of place this on top. So what you can do when you hover over a module, you see these little handles and you can just scrunch that up and then I can just move that up here. And uh, again, because just to, let's say, I just wanna make this look more like the proportions of a regular piece of paper, I can just stretch that out. Uh, the key thing also, when, when you're all done, I mean, you can, um, you don't have to publish immediately, like definitely before you uh, submit for a review, you would have to, you just click publish changes. Tempo, uh, okay, private to me. Um, if you wanna share it with your cohort course, you can. So, um, well, first let me just go through the whole thing here. Uh, the default is private to me, so only you can see it. Also, um, generally the, the faculty of the doctoral program, that's just a default built in the template. And um, so here you can click, um, if you wanna show it to the rest of your class, you can do, um, Start typing in the name of the course, EV Higher Education, for example, cohort six, and here's 13. And click Save Settings and Publish. Let me see what else is going on in the chat. Uh, okay, the template question we've resolved. And do uh, changes save, save automatically? Uh, yeah, they save automatically. Okay. Yeah, they save automatically, but they don't publish. That's what Vancha was showing is if you, so they'd only be visible to you until you hit publish. Right, right. Uh, publish is only for others to see, yes. So I'll go on to another piece here. So, um, oh, I can also, let's add a, let's add a picture, shall we? Uh, very important. Um, so here's uh, the plus button again. And I'll go to, again, it's upload file. So it's always just plus an upload file. Uh, doesn't, Digication doesn't discern between like, um, among the, the file formats it does accept, it, it doesn't discern between, um, you know, if it's a, a PDF or a JPEG or a video or something like that. Uh, go into pictures. I have this thing. Hey. And there we go, upload. And there it is done. It's uh, rather big. So again, we can grab our little handles and move this around. Again, I can also just move this down here if I wanted to and scooch this over. So you can kind of uh, exercise some creative muscle should you choose. Uh, as you hover over a module, you can see this auto resize button. It kind of will snap it to what it thinks is generally okay for you. All right, boom, and then I can just put my resume up here. Um, also along the, um, the text box edits you can make, you can put a hyperlink in there, for example. Um, I'll just say, I'm gonna put, oh. And I noticed, Bancha, when you were hovering that there are some like memo notes in some of those. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to say that um, two of the old notes that are in there are of former students' e-portfolios. It's fine to take a peek at them, but they use a version of digication 
that we no longer use. So they would look very different. Um, so if you do pop on there, just realize that's why we're sharing Bonches and Ian's versus Kelly and Peter's because it was an earlier version and we don't want to create confusion. Classic digication versus new digication. We switched yes. to new digication maybe around 18 or 19. Uh, uh, so yeah, 19, I'm going to highlight the uh, Manhattanville College saying, and I can do this and I can do new, uh, open a new window generally, and then click um, check mark. Um, another fun thing I want to show you was, uh, say I have, a, I have a photo here, I can add more items. So say I was going to, I can also go to previous uploads, other things I've uploaded in the past. Here is uh, here's a picture of me at a conference. All right, <laughs> and there it is. I could edit the caption, so I can say uh, Ed Camp Team, and I can click here and write uh, Doctoral Retreat, and etc. So you've got these little dots here. It makes a little slideshow. So if you want to show pictures of yourself at your institution or um, just doing, uh, if you have a, I'll show you mine later. You know, I had um, several, like I think I newsletter pages or uh, other photos from this conference. So it became like a conference slideshow that you can do. Uh, let's see, what else is there? Let me, I'm gonna, any questions so far? I'm keeping, I actually am keeping an eye on the chat this time. Uh, I can show you uh, mine just to, show you what a completed one looks like. So uh, I'll publish changes again here. Oh, I think, oh, another thing I want to show you. So these are, uh, it's, it's the template and you've got these uh, prompts and modules. If you need to break things out a little more, for example, like leading learning organizations, oh, here, um, professional communities. So I say I wanted to add something. Uh, I click on the lock, highlight over the menu bar, and then here's the, the outline kind of breakdown of all the different pages. So I can add new page. Um, let's say I can type in uh, quality matters, uh, instructional design association, something like that. And if I scooch this over, pull it, it'll go under communities. So or you uh, drag it up if you wanted it to become scholar yeah, so yeah, practitioner, wanted, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm leading a learning organization. I can just okay. pull it up there. Uh, for now, I can just, I'm just gonna pull it here, save. So now under uh, communities, I've got this uh, design association. A new page, right? Yeah, um, just tread carefully around here. That's why it, this, this page is like ever present on all the pages. So. That's why there's a lot to just make sure um, you're you're doing that <laughs> mindfully. Um, and Bancha, we, there are two questions in the uh, chat. We have here. How do you delete the old template I started? Uh, adding resumes is difficult. Okay. Um, so to delete, if you uh, make an errant one, uh, up at the top here, you've got settings and then delete. So you'll note here, this says delete portfolio. This will wipe the whole thing. Make absolutely sure you're on the one you want to delete absolutely. and not the one you've been working in and want to keep. Yeah, uh, delete portfolio. Okay, back to dashboard. That's That old portfolio is gone. It's got no place to go. Uh, adding resume is difficult. Mine won't pop up, especially in the text area. Do I need to refresh or another button? Um, can you, do, would you want to do a screen share? We've got like 10 minutes, but uh, let's let's see what we've got here. Bansha, I think I just did what you, so I did what you did, which was I deleted the resume module and just slid that. Is that okay? We don't have to have that text thing that says resume, right? It could be- No, like, no, it just, uh, I'll show you mine, for example. I took a lot of creative license. I broke mine out quite a bit. Um, so here's about me, uh, my contact. And so I, didn't, I didn't call it contact information. I added social media. So again, there's these links. I added little obvious, hey, this is social media <laughs> section. Um, so here, 
So on the main template, there is just the about me page, I believe, but I just broke it out into personal statement and resume. So a uh, personal statement, uh, this is what I used in my application. So generally what people do is they'll upload a whole you know, PDF as we saw with that sample CV. I just did a little extra and I copied and pasted the whole thing. I feel it's more readable this way. Uh, it's more laborious this way, but I'm an instructional technologist and that is what I do. <laughs> it says delete is not an option. Um, okay, let me just show you a couple more pages and I'll do uh, the troubleshooting tour. Um, so here's resume. So again, I copied and pasted uh, my resume into here. And I also did a link to a printable version. So I use that hyperlink tool. Uh, this just pops out to my, um, my resume on Google Drive. Uh, so as I showed you before, so group project. This is uh, the conference I worked on. This is the organizing team. And so I just made a little slide. I didn't put captions on, I don't think, um, of the event. Uh, these are PDFs. Actually, they're images of like the promotional materials we made, screenshot of the website, et cetera. Um, I'm trying to announce. So a big part, uh, Dr. Ivers can talk more about this. A big part of ePortfolio is not just it's not just a collection of artifacts of your leadership experiences in education. Um, ideally, that should be paired with some reflection as to uh, how the artifact is an expression of um, the leadership activity. So here, this is uh, a paper of <clears throat> I did for financing higher education. Uh, this is just a link to the paper. I didn't feel the need to, the, the reviewer can click on this and read it. it it'll come out this, this way. Uh, I didn't, it, it's kind of unreadable if I put it actually on the page. Uh, for example, um, let me just show you this quickly. So here's a Google Drive, anyone with the link, um, view, copy link. So here I could throw it up so I can uh, embed. Google Drive, this button is actually a little wonky recently, but uh, the workaround is you can just embed a, a website link. Oops. I'll paste the link there. It'll appear like this, and then I'll click embed. The paper appears like this. It's not, it's there. Uh, personally, I just like the look of the way I've done the personal statement better. You've got all this uh, quote unquote Chrome here. I mean, I guess uh, someone could just open this and jump around. I mean, it's, it's there. I just kind of felt that, I'll delete this. And uh, Jelaine did post a follow-up about like delete, delete not being an option. So okay, maybe um, when you get to a pause point, she could do a screenshot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my, my point was that I've got the artifact here and I put a little reflection on it as to how this, this piece, this paper fit into the program and my own development as a, as a leader. Um, and that's, that's what uh, Bancha is highlighting for all of you is a change that was put in place a couple years ago because the faculty realized that students were just like plopping a bunch of stuff in there, but we didn't really know how to make sense of what was where or why. So yeah. the addition of just a small paragraph that gives us some insight into why you chose what you chose and how it connects um, was a piece that was um, added. Right, so you can consider the ePortfolio on the whole as a, as a way to tell your story with uh, these quote unquote illustrations. Um, one more thing, philosophy statement. So here again, like I put here, prepared for leadership and self-assessment fall 2019, and this is the essay. I could have, I felt, I copied and pasted this whole essay. I felt it was short enough. It's like just uh, two some odd pages, but um, like the, the big finance paper, that's like, 10, whatever, 20 pages. So I felt it wouldn't have fit in there. Again, personal thing. Um, I just, I took a little extra and I just uh, made a new page just because to, I, to keep track of other things that I did outside the program. But 
related to higher ed leadership, leadership uh, in the media, that's subject to change, but. Uh, and that's helpful, Bancha, to illustrate that. Well, majority of students probably don't use this beyond the um, advancement to candidacy submission. It is your portfolio. And so if you do want to um, archive other materials or create a tab that you might share elsewhere, that's certainly your option because it is your page. Yeah. Uh, so here again is like some contextual information, a link to said episode, um, social media activity around the episode. Um, here's the my last point, and then I'll go back to the questions. Um, city certificate. So here's a, a screenshot of the certificate. I made it linkable. So as you update, um, when you have the image up, you can click settings here. Um, make image clickable. And then you put the link in there. And then this will go out to the CITI page on the web. And again, so here's sort of, I think everyone knows what the, the ethics certificate is, but I just, I didn't want just a quote unquote naked unaccompanied image there with no context. So that's um, part of that. So uh, per Dr. Iverson's point, like what I'm planning to do eventually as necessary, I, I will probably clone this and just delete things that another reviewer might not, like this is pretty internal to my being a student, so they might not need to see that, but um, things like professional communities and other things, they first year reflection that might not be relevant yeah. to somebody, I don't know, but researcher journal, definitely, I would not share that outside. Mm -hmm. um, so, all and right, that's let where me- you can also hide those things so that what's public versus what might just be yeah, you can archival hide. to you are also yeah. um, choices to yeah. make. And I did mention in the chat box, but want to underscore for everyone, um, all doctoral programs have some form of advancement to candidacy and most have what are called comprehensive exams at the end of your coursework phase prior to moving to dissertation proposal and so forth. And in the application to the state for the doctoral program, the e-portfolio was what was a proposed and approved in lieu of comprehensive exams. And a lot of times when students hear that, they're like, cool. <laughs> because not a lot of people always want to take on comprehensive exams. So just so that you understand that's what this is um, in lieu of and how it is part of that advancement to candidacy to show some of your um, insights through brief reflections, like a you know paragraph um, on certain artifacts um, that connect with these themes. And Great. while I know that Higher Ed 6 has been diligently trying to craft these, hopefully cohort 13, you've also been able to at least create your URL so that when you're in Dr. Marion's class this spring and moving towards the capstone course in the summer, um, you have this and you can go back to it. All Jesse, right. did I see you had a question? I did, and I'm, I'm not even talking about the one I put in the chat. This is more of, a, I trying to make sure that our cohort is doing this the right way. So do you know how in the beginning you had shown us there was like a cohort six page? Yeah. When we created our portfolios, was that automatically supposed to populate with our, like if we created it the correct way, was that automatically supposed to populate with our cohort six pages or are we supposed to do that? Does someone else do that? Does that, is that even a thing? Um, you like can- How do they get under that? Oh, when you publish yeah. it, it'll, it'll ask you to choose a, you can type in- gotcha. um, okay. Uh, I'm going to stop recording now.